112 miles on the GOM, 60% or thereabouts. But uh, this is where we are on the final route of this holiday road trip to and from Cleveland, Ohio. Back in Boston then, we just completed a uh, 1500 plus mile uh, round trip over the last week, holiday week, um, to Cleveland, Ohio and back uh, all the way. I've struggled to decide how long it should be, whether it should be one big long uh, epic thing or lots of small pieces, um, but there's so many little pieces of it and uh, places I'd like to kind of put a spotlight on, look at the routes and uh, the charge sessions, the communities we visited, people we met. So uh, I decided to just do this video, which will just be a summary trip as quick as I can make it, showing you the routes we took. Um, it'll give you an idea of what's to come because like I say, I'll take little pieces and uh, pull them out of the video and do what I can to kind of show the uh, different elements of this trip there was you know aside from the routes and the cost and convenience uh, there was also you know expanded infrastructure um, weather and yeah just to really round out 2019 say thank you to everyone who's watched the videos and uh, commented given their opinions I have all kinds of stuff to come for 2020 lots of fun stuff even in the first uh, month two months of the year so uh, do more on that this week I'll make some uh, videos kind of looking at the start of the year and the stuff that's to come up but for now thanks for watching i appreciate all your support comments feedback and everything throughout the last year and uh looking forward to making the next one a good one so happy new year to you and yours and uh yeah 2020 here we come setting off winter road trip 2019 the coat off the top. 180 miles, fully charged, ready to go. As you can see, single unit Nissan Leaf charging at the moment here is up to about 75-80% almost, so uh, it shouldn't be long, but uh, what would have been a pretty quick stop because we are, we still have 52 miles on the GOM, but it's uh, about that distance to Albany, New York. So it's just, it's as we uh, looked at in the route planner, it's squeezing it a little bit too tight. Uh, we did start over the first 100 miles we were pretty close to 3.3 miles per kilowatt hour the whole way. A little bit of traffic in some places, uh, so you know, up and down, but uh, it started to drop. Went down to 3 miles per kilowatt hour uh, once we got into the Berkshires, and that uh, just pulls you down. Makes sense to come in here, it is a really good location because this is the service area right off the Mass Pike. But this uh, single station with so many more EVs coming on the road, that is going to be real old real soon so we do want to get some more in here so 15 minutes gonna shut off
two here, see if it gets us stuck. So, we just got iced. Oh well. Plug in. Stiff cable. Okay, so we are plugged in. And swipe. I just stopped an ISA by saying they might be towed. <laughs> okay, so we're starting from the app. All you have to do is get out and plug in. It is cold. We're now at 24 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's nice to be in the car while that's doing its thing. So I might just be having problems making the connection. I did actually get a uh, piece of equipment I might be able to test out here. This might be a good opportunity. Uh, fellow Bolt owner, Mike in Lowell, uh, one of the Drive Electric events, gave me a piece of equipment that I can try. Let's see. So he gave me this. I'm going to try it. It's uh, to put onto the charge port. Um, to give the cable some support, might be too heavy to start up here. Let's see. Here it is. A little piece of 3D printed, printed plastic slides in under there. Let's see if that works. Simple, maybe effective. Yes. Thank you, Mike. Could just be the unit, I guess, but that seems to have made a pleasant... Oh, maybe not. <laughs> Spoke too soon. Oh, no, there we go. Okay, my grace period starts immediately, apparently. Okay, well, Electro America, we have some work to do still, but let's get going. Try it again. I'm just relieving the weight off it myself to give it a good handshake. So 41 minutes to 80%, not too bad, but you will notice, although we are at 44 kilowatts now, this uh, is starting at 36%. Yes, well, we started the first charge at 16%. Uh, unfortunately, it decided to shut off at 20% uh, later, so at 36%, it gave me a little warning. At least I got the idle time warning saying I'd be charged 40 cents per minute after a 10 minute grace period. So this is the same as uh, we saw in Waterloo, New York, uh, over the summer. We got the same as that time, a warning that uh, the charge had stopped and we needed to return to the car. So it's not ideal. In this case, I was actually coming back. But if you were in the middle of your shopping or if you were sitting down to food, um, this wouldn't work. If you have to run out of the store whilst you're in line or something like that. That's going to get pretty frustrating pretty quickly. Um, there was no real reason for it to stop on this, this particular um, attempt. I mean, it got 20% into the charge, so it wasn't uh, having a problem with the connection. It was all connected fine and charging, um, so that's a little bit annoying. However, on the restart here, we are seeing up to 45 kilowatts, 46.
Destination charging. Now, so after leaving Herkimer with exactly the amount of mileage that we needed 140 to 140 miles to get here, uh, actually recouped a little bit on the way. Got ourselves up to 3.1 miles per kilowatt hour here in the last 10 miles or so. And yeah, basically just had to peg it below 70 miles per hour. So I didn't know quite how much we would get back or whether we'd have to stop at the Waterloo, New York, Electrify America site. Really didn't want to do that due to getting off the interstate and all the time of dragging over to the outlets, doing whatever for 10, 15 minutes just for a small bumping range. So pretty happy that we made it. Not even a uh, turtle mode, not even a, um, well, one charge vehicle soon we got in the last couple of miles, but uh, as soon as we got off the interstate, you start regenerating. And uh, as long as you've got that 15 to 20 miles buffer, um, you're good. go just level two charging nothing exciting but after you've had almost 400 miles on the road that is a sight for sore eyes but uh, this is the neighboring town or village whatever to the uh, village of Fairport where tomorrow we'll meet some uh, fellow EV enthusiast So you can see we sat pretty cold overnight. We've uh, just got up to 32 degrees Fahrenheit. And the battery heater, whilst I was preconditioning here, has gone to work. Got the battery temperature up to 53.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Still some battery heating going on, 1.5 kilowatts. Hey, commercials. <laughs> it took a while to get...
stop this myself. Yeah, 85%. 25 to 85. Let's unplug because that grace period is counting down. Okay, let's take a look how the other half lives. This is our family. So four Electrify America stations here. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And this would probably be considered a relatively small Tesla station. But there you go. And they typically stop at the Cracker Barrel to eat. And that's what we're doing. So, onward after this. It gets to there about 20 minutes before. of this trip stats this was reset in Fairport New York near Rochester so that was the second day second leg of our journey down to just west of Cleveland Ohio so we used a little over 100 kilowatt hours to go 304 miles pretty much and it was much warmer yesterday we had temperatures all the way up to 51 degrees at the height of the day 51 degrees Fahrenheit and it went down to maybe early 40s in the evening, but uh, we got a lot of good uh, good temperatures to drive. So very little climate settings, just uh, that's the difference between defogging the window with uh, just normal air and uh, defogging it with heat. I think we used about 5% climate settings on the way the first day and just the 1% yesterday as it got colder in the evening. And you can see with the outside temperature drag, it was only minus 3.2 whereas it was a solid minus 5 for the first day when it was below freezing so that shows a little bit uh, how much you can claw back with just 10 15 degrees difference in your temperature So this is the uh, return journey to Boston, Massachusetts from Cleveland, Ohio. Um, we are anticipating a slightly different journey. The conditions tomorrow should be a lot rainier. They will also be warmer. So we're at um, 40, mid 40 degrees Fahrenheit right now. Um, and that is probably gonna go up to mid 50s tomorrow on the way back. 100% rain everywhere along the route. There's no conceivable route that I've looked back at through New York, uh, Pennsylvania, there's four, three or four routes that we can take that are very similar distances, different charging infrastructure along the way of each, but uh, essentially they're all going to be rainy, they're all going to be uh, wet and low attraction, so that's going to be our fate for the journey back. The bright side is the temperature will be a lot better, so it's not going to be below freezing as it was on the way over. We are probably going to see some pretty reasonable charge times. So the southern tier of uh, New York, it is not a direct route, it's um, not the straight shot that I-90 is, but that's okay. We are not in a big rush on this uh, trip. This route, I will call it the frugal route. If you take Electrify America, you know, our, our journey wasn't expensive with the Electrify America sites, but the, um, the Southern Tier has all kinds of uh, cheaper options. Charge overnight at a hotel wherever we stop between, you know, somewhere in the middle of New York State. Uh, free charge at two of the welcome centers. You're probably looking at one stop to get back into uh, Massachusetts at some point, maybe at the Chicopee Electrify America site, but at that point, you're pretty much home for 
the price of one charge and whatever the electricity is here on the domestic socket. So oh, no, this will see, it'll be an interesting journey. And uh, I appreciate everyone who's kind of watched the Instagram post and uh, wished us well on the journey. It's, it's really not that um, difficult anymore. We've had journeys before I was really, uh, you know, filming these things or showing them on YouTube um, that were, were way more difficult. So it's been a fun ride this time. Interesting to be able to experiment and actually take these different routes and say, well, there's a route that we can go back to if we really get, uh, you know, we just want to take it easy. We have <clears throat> an almost empty bolt, but we have Christmas to pack. Skateboards and keyboards and baggage. Oh my. Well, stuff to the gills and the hatch closed. It's the only test that matters. And now we hit the road. left let's see use the old school card so you have standard CCS Chadamo just the one here but we're pretty far away from anything that is like a major route so and this is the uh, there you go starting at 12% Easy to charge. And the bonus here is you have a downtown. So instead of being stuck at a Walmart, we can go and explore a little town center. Why do they have say it's Chevy, but they spell it Chevrolet? This isn't charging us per minute, it's charging us by energy, so it really doesn't matter how long we stay, but that would be more than enough, so we'll get ourselves set up, unplug, and away we go. Turn left onto New York 60 North, North Main Street.
a pretty unpleasant day in general, all in all. But as you can see, very close to I-86. Our icing friend has gone. There's a SUV occupying this Tesla spot last night. Clearly didn't make any difference. Remember to unplug when it's unlocked. The cable management. Let's see where we are. Fully charged. 184 miles on the GOM, still holding that 3.2 miles per kilowatt hour, even though we've added an extra 300 miles or so on highway speeds, which is very good. The rain is definitely a bit heavier today, could be a factor on our journey, but it's supposed to be warm still. Hopefully this one works, but redundancy. We want to be able to charge multiple vehicles at one moment, so we won't have to wait an extra half hour for this. So as I say, we started at a slightly higher state of charge here, probably around 40%, and uh, that's only gonna be 37 minutes here to 80%. I think we need 120, 125 miles, something like that to uh, crack on. So a quick look at the usage, then we'll have a look at the area. So even to Lee, our local area, that will be 180 miles. Probably gonna be a bit of a stretch. We'll see right away. We've got 5% climate settings because it's cold enough to need to use the demister and heat up a little bit. We got around about 100 miles on 36 kilowatt hours, so not quite. We definitely saw some uh, increased consumption on that little stint from Corning, New York to uh, just here by Kirkwood, New York. Technique is just awful because we're in hills and going fast on highways. But otherwise, we're making it where we need to make it. Okay, so that was a bit slower than expected or hoped because of the conditions, but no problem, made it. These look on. So, Capital Region Welcome Center, just south of Albany, New York. We've uh, been here before in the spring. It was similar conditions actually, albeit not freezing. I'm gonna get plugged in. See, I'll guess around 13, 14%. 14%. Okay, now the test will be here. How fast do we get up to speed? We have been driving a lot, but the temperature's fallen down to about one just above freezing, 34 degrees Fahrenheit here. So it's not as quick as the uh, Southern Tier Welcome Center. The southern Tier, we were straight up to 40 kilowatts and didn't take much to get to 44, 45 kilowatts, I think. Um, but that was the difference. Even with all the driving, you know, 
but when that temperature starts to get round to freezing point, below 40 especially, but round to 30, mid 30s Fahrenheit, it's going to be a slower startup. Now this is pretty good actually, it's not, you know, for winter this is not a bad startup rate, which is 80 miles away. So we're already done here, we've only just grabbed a snack. And this will probably be enough. We have a stretch of hills ahead of us, as well as in the Berkshires, as well as this uncertain weather. Um, I don't actually know much about the Kona Electric's charging profile. We'll have to take a look. You can see he's been somewhere frosty as well. There we go. Frontal charging, which makes it a bit better. Let's see, he's at 53%, pulling 109 amps. So we're quite similar, you know, similar state of charge and that doesn't seem to be pulling that much more power. We've actually been here 35 minutes now. Okay, so this has not been a whole heap of fun and nothing to do with EV issues, just winter returning with a vengeance. Uh, does, this doesn't show what the roads have been like. They were pretty clear aside from the top of uh, the high point on um, at the top of the Berkshires. That was not the best. Okay, so I'm pulling up to one here. This Electrify America site, Chicopee, Massachusetts. And the first one is offline there. Let's see, maybe I'll reverse in. Okay, let's plug in and do the rest from the app. So I would guess we're about 22, 23% state of charge maybe. We're here in the middle of Massachusetts, just north of Springfield. Should take me there. Okay, I am on unit number three, if you can see up there. So I slide down to number three. It's unavailable because I'm on it. Ready to go. I can replicate that on this. And there's a good chance this will just conk out on the basis of, oh no, there we go. And how does the charge rate look? Briefly concerning but uh, now straight up to 41 kilowatts still trying to figure out what charge state of charge we're at but the machine does know this might not be visible through the rainy sleety window here but it says yeah there we go 23% state of charge Okay. Anywho, um, yeah, 112 miles on the GOM, 60% or thereabouts, past, uh, we've got 6% climate settings now with the drag from the last 100 miles or so and the temperature is now reaching 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, I'll do a wrap at the end, this is all just perfunctory kind of uh, note taking, but uh, this is where we are on the final route of this holiday road trip to and from Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, we came back to just the worst uh, ice storm, freezing rain, kind of hovering on that 32, 33 degrees Fahrenheit temperature, which is just, you know, killer for when it's precipitation and uh, all that stuff was a very, very unpleasant kind of last hour or two of the journey, but we made it no problem, you know, just steady and slow.